Okay, welcome back. So, hopefully, this is going to be the last part of this process now. Um, between filming sessions, I've gone off and washed all of the buttons. There's actually many boxes of these things. Um, washed all of the keycaps, washed all of the plastic down. Everything is clean, ready to go, ready to reassemble. First thing I'm going to do is I need to prop this up. Um, let me try and demonstrate why. Um, so I'm just going to get my uh, my springs here. What we need to happen is for me to not drop things or lose things down the back of the workbench. We need to replace all of these springs, pop all of these springs back in here. So because this is the mechanism by which you know the contact is actually made on the membrane. So if I were to lie this down flat on on the workbench then some sit okay like that what we need is we need them to sit in these little in these little grooves here some sit like that but because of the curved nature of this thing some will sit proud some will sit slightly proud i picked a bad choice there because that one's up in mid-ear so that was actually okay so is that one this is a bad choice I'm trying to demonstrate something and uh not doing it there we go so we see this one here so it needs to sit flat um, in these little grooves so that we can lay everything, so that we can reassemble everything properly. All I'm going to do, just prop this up. I've got a couple of uh, hard drives. They'll do. Uh, just need to prop this up. Well, hey, there we go. So uh, I actually need my needle nose pliers. Have I put everything away? I do this all the time. I do this all the time. Trying to keep things clean and tidy and I end up putting things away that I need. So, what we need to do... Oh, this is precarious, isn't it? Huh. Right, sorry about that. Um, what we need to do, what I need to do, you just need to sit there and watch, or not, um, is reseat every single one of these springs. Once I've done that, then I can start layering things back together. Um, obviously, the part that goes on top here, uh, or what goes on here rather, is the um, is the rubber layer first, then the two layers of the membrane, then the rear back plate. And what I will do at that point then is I'll put a couple of screws through, bolt a couple of things, uh, put a couple of the bolts together, um, and then I can safely turn it back over then once it's secured in place, hopefully without any risk of springs falling out all over the place. Now, what I've just done there is popped some springs back in, which I probably don't want to use. So some of these, hopefully we can see this on camera, uh, some of these are actually going a little bit rusty at the top here. So I've got two boxes of springs over here, as you may recall, one from the, uh, the keyboard that I'm actually repairing, but then I've also got the springs from the donor machine as well. Now. The ones on the donor machine are older, and I think these have less. These are definitely on their way out, so I think if it's preferable that I use the springs, the newer springs, which have got um, much better actuation to them, but obviously I'm going to need to uh, replace quite a few of these. When I was taking this apart, I noticed that quite a few of these springs have, um, have rust on them. I think what happened previously was um, when I was washing out the buttons, I didn't let this cavity fully dry um, and there's water in there and obviously it's damaged the springs. That could also be part of the reason why we have some corrosion in here. So I'm uh, not going to sit, uh, make you sit and watch me placing individual springs or dropping them down the back of the workbench. Where did that go? That's fine. So this definitely the tedious part of this process well in fact you know what there have been very many tedious parts of this process I'm not gonna lie hopefully I have not had to make you sit through too many tedious parts just enough to uh, give you an idea of what's involved with this kind of job so I said before that Washing a keyboard key by key is one of the most tedious things you can do. 
everything involving this, <laughs> this keyboard, repairing this keyboard has been very tedious, but it will be very much worthwhile. Um, they are honestly, I've said before, they are honestly the best keyboard I have ever used and I will stand by that. They're for my money, nothing comes close to a Model M. So, let's see, can I see the time? I cannot, never mind. Do apologize, my, uh, my uh, crappy um, tripod fell over then. Anyway, sorry, as I was saying, I'm not gonna make you sit through this uh, and watch the, the process of reassembling absolutely every spring because like this one here, I'm going to mess things up and it's tedious to get these back out. So I'm not gonna make you sit and watch that. I will be back when we're done. Okay, just before I get too much further with this, probably one thing worth pointing out here. Um, along this row, you'll notice that we have a gap here and there's a good reason for that. So this, because well, it's worth pointing out because it just caught me out and it is likely to catch others out as well. So if I take a look at this key, this is the backspace key. Um, uh, it'd be that way around for you, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. So on the bottom of this key, um, we've only actually got one here just one of the, well, it basically takes up two spaces. It takes up both of these spaces on the keyboard, but it's only actually this part which has a spring in it as far as I, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was out of shot. It's only actually this part which has a spring in it as far as I'm aware. The other side has one of, he says, filling for time because he doesn't have things to hand, has one of these spaces in it. So I think the best way to show you this is on the donor keyboard because that still has its keys attached. So here is exactly the same donor board and we can see that little space is sticking through there. So it's only actually this side which needs to, uh, which needs to hit the, um, the membrane, the contact on the membrane. And there's the same, you'll notice that there are a handful around here. So we've got, what's that, five, um, sorry, maths fail. Three, four, five. Um, I actually have six keys over here where we have these spaces. So I think the best thing, I need to identify where all these live. So we've got the enter key. That one's gonna be easy enough. That one's uh, here, that's a space. So let me, what I'll do actually, I'll pop springs in around it so that I know not to fill that one in. And I don't mind if I just don't get them right, right now. I'll come back and fix it later. So, worth bearing that in mind. I, these spaces can be pushed through from the other side of the keyboard. These can be pushed through from this side. So, I'm not gonna worry about putting them on right now, but I need to make sure that I don't populate those parts with springs, um, because it's not necessary. So, Time to finish doing this, I guess. Alrighty, welcome back. So, all of the springs are in place now. Um, hopefully, uh, let's uh, bring the camera up just a little bit, there we go. Nope, that didn't actually do anything, did it? Let's get a bit of a better view because I'm not moving this. Um, right, what I now need to do is layer everything back together. Um, so what I've done, um, I've taken a couple of pieces of tape um, and stuck down some screws to the other side of the plastic so I can use as kind of registration markers. Hopefully what these registration markers will allow me to do is to line up all of the pieces that need to be sandwiched back together. So we start with this rubber membrane, uh, which actually went on there a lot smoother than I was expecting. Now is the actual keyboard membrane. So, what I have noticed, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show this very well on camera. So, the membrane, this rubber piece that's in there now, is the one that originally came in that keyboard. This one um, is a slightly different, this one is from the donor keyboard, and I think the holes are slightly different in this. So there's like, there's one over here which is off camera which doesn't appear on the other one. Um, but what I'm hoping, and I will find out very shortly, is that the membrane also has the right holes in here. 
So let's lay the membrane down on top. So the screws I've used as registration markers look okay. So a few things are slightly out of alignment like over here. Actually, let's see uh, if I can get some screws in on that side. I've got a little piece of tape here. Uh, hmm. This part I thought was going to be tricky. What I'm hoping is that once I get a few of these bolts down, that's going to be enough to hold the uh, hold the overall shape. And then, uh, you know, it's going to give it enough rigidity so that I can pick this up without fear of all of these springs falling back out. Nope. This looks like this is going to be difficult to do. Uh, hmm. Hmm. The problem is, I can't actually see where the hole is. Uh, yeah, that's what she said. Stop it. Okay, that's got it. So, let's try and get this little piece of tape on there. Uh, no, it fell. Bugger. Okay, well, hopefully... I've got enough screws in there, uh, enough bolts in there to keep everything together. So obviously on the original keyboard, where we've got all of these holes um, that I've drilled through, those would have been pieces of plastic sticking up through to, you know, and then when it comes to assembly, whoever is on the assembly line is just gonna, you know, slot it all on a jig and it's just all gonna be easy to do. Um, where's the plate? Here is the plate and here, is the important part. Right, so. Okay, what I'm going to do, first of all, just take a couple of these, and let's just tighten them in a little bit, just so that I can give it some structural rigidity, hopefully. So all of these ones I've used as guides. get these screwed in obviously I'm not doing them up very tight I'm gonna to need to go back over and tighten all of these all I want to do is just clamp everything together um, in such a way that I don't have to balance it like this and I can actually pick the thing up and work on it properly I screwed that one up didn't I you probably couldn't see it. I probably have my hand in the way here. Never mind. There we go. I think this is working well. These nuts are too small. Stop it with the innuendo. I can hear you in the back. Okay, so hopefully it's uh you know what, before I flip this around, I'm just gonna get a couple more nuts in the side. One more over here, I think, and then we'll flip him over. Oops. Well, at least it wasn't my nuts I dropped then, it was just a bolt. Alrighty, here we go. Yes. So, let's clear these drives out of the way don't need those for support anymore there we go so you can see what I uh, what I did here oh no I've left the rusty one boo cool so here's a test now let's pop one of the buttons on uh, no it doesn't uh, it doesn't click but that is probably there we go. Once we've got enough clamping force in. Yes. Right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut here. I am now going to assemble. I oh, know I caught the spring on that one. This is why you have to be careful with this. Very careful with these springs because it's very easy to snag them on the edge of here. 
and damage them. And I am not going through that whole bloody pro and another one there, look. Ah, I'm hoping they're gonna be okay though. Uh, let's just uh, pop a button in and I'll be able to test it. If I hold it down, it still clicks, it's still good. Okay, so I don't know how many bolts I've got to get through here, but it's quite a few. So I'm gonna cut here. I'm not sure in this video, let's have a quick look. No, I don't think I'm gonna get time to get it plugged into a computer. Hopefully that's gonna come in the next one. Uh, we'll just do the final assembly. If I can get the board put back together, that will be good. So I think what I'll probably do is start on the outsides and kind of work my way in. Anyway, I will be back. Ta-da! It's done! That was tedious. Not gonna lie. Let's uh, take a look at the back here. So, yeah, fitting all those was not fun. One thing will be an issue. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too bad. While I was off camera, I did a bit of a test fit into the chassis. Um, and, okay, so let me see if I can get this along here. So these bolts sit too far down basically and they um, they foul against the bottom of the case um, when it gets to final assembly hopefully i'll be able to show you that a little bit better i've just noticed that i've missed the hole there's a hole here what a muppet because i put away all the nuts and the bolts but i don't mind telling you that was t d s tedious before i wrap up what i'm going to do is just pop the buttons back in uh, pop the stems the buttons call them what you will pop all those back in um, because if they don't work properly um, if there are some uh, some switches where's that little nut gone there we go uh, if there are some switches which um, don't actuate properly it means that i've got a whole hell of a lot more work to do in order to uh, in order to make this keyboard work and get it back up and running otherwise i'm hoping that i don't do that too much but i'm hoping that we are now good what i'm going to do actually let me get the case um i'll pop it back in the case in the bottom case just so that we protect these connectors for the membrane so hopefully let's see if this is in shot so let's line it up with those holes there so yeah come on you can do it Nope, needs to come over a little bit. There we go. Nope. Yeah, I think there's a bolt down here sitting too far forward. Okay. Uh, I think I know which one it is. I think it's this one here, which is sticking up a little bit too much. Let's try and correct that now. The alternative is that I take the Dremel and chop the bottom of the bolts off. Make it fit. Don't want to have to do that, but I will if I need to. So hopefully you can see there, if I try and... Basically, it doesn't want to sit proud, I, uh, sit flush. I have to make it, I have to force it in there to make it sit flush. Hopefully it's not going to cause a problem. So let's get all the buttons in. Oh yeah. That's a good sound. What I want to hear, the how you see here, this isn't clicking properly. So some of these springs are clearly duff. This one's fine. So F1 here needs replacing. That's F2, F3. Um, should I leave the caps on, I wonder? I'm gonna have to take this apart again uh, and replace this spring. Yeah, it's just flat out not working. Hmm. No, I'm going to need to take the caps off. Yeah, I think what's happening here is well, these are some of the springs that got replaced. 
with the older ones, unfortunately. Um, okay, I will do this off camera then because this could be quite tedious. Uh, so I need to go through, test every single one of these, plug all the keys back in, test them all. How tedious. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap it up for the evening because it is getting on quite late in the evening here. I don't want to be doing all this. I don't want to be doing this all night. I do not to switch off at some point. But thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully next time that will be the last uh, in this series. So that's what now? Four videos, I believe, I'm on now. Hopefully that will be the last and I will repair. Ah, here's another one. Here's another knackered one. Um, is it just a case that there's not enough force holding it together? Yeah. What about this one over here? Now, if I try as I might, if I compress that even harder, that's just not actuating. This one over here is fine. Uh, it's just F1 by the look of it. Okay, as I was saying, I will... Oh yeah, look at this, look. So we're definitely not right. Um, this is not sitting flush. This is not sitting flush uh, in the bottom of the case. Uh, there's clearly some work to do. I have a feeling it's just that these bolts along the bottom are sitting a little bit proud. Um, that's fine, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. If that's the worst that happens out of this, that's fine. Um, what I will, like I say, what I'll probably end up doing, hopefully there's enough clearance for this, is just push these uh, screws all the way through and just lop off the bottom of the Dremel. So, I really am going to shut up and go now. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.